Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the Gigabyte F2A 85X UP4. This uses their new Ultra Durable 5 technology, which means you've got ultra cool, ultra efficient, ultra performance, and high current capability. Yes, they have completely redesigned their power delivery systems, including their best of Computex award, etc., etc., with an industry leading 60 amps rated power stage with lower losses, higher efficiency, and lower temperatures than compatible, compatible, comparable products from their competitors. Compatible products. Okay. Digital power, 3D BIOS, so that's their dual UEFI BIOS. Dual BIOS means that even if something totally bad happens and your BIOS gets bricked, you can uh, boot from the other one. New glass fabric PCB, I believe that was a UD4 feature. Maybe it's UD5, I don't know, but basically it's better for humid environments, such as like, you know, Southeast Asia or whatever else like that. Cool power inside and out, so single package design. Basically these, these, yeah, these are like the beast and they run cooler and they deliver more current and they're just absolutely better than other power delivery systems. And based on my experience with their X7, D9, something UP5, X79 SUP5, I think it's the one. It's completely silent. No coil wine, no nonsense. It's just awesome. Okay, 2X copper PCB, power failure protection, uh, surge protection. So if bad things happen again, it'll blow out, you know, maybe like, you know, if you have like your power supply goes and there's a surge that goes through your board, it might blow out like one USB port instead of like a bank of four of them, that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, digital power for the CPU and the GPU on your APU. There's two power zones. And what else we got here? Yeah, basically the gist of it is cooler is better for overclocking and better for efficiency, which it is. We've got four SATA 36 gigabit per second cables. We've got an empty thing, slick. <laughs> I don't know what was in there. Static. Static. Oh, more SATA cables. Okay, so apparently there's six. We've got a utility DVD, user's manual, multilingual installation guidebook, and he claims, see, we've already benchmarked this board actually, and uh, yeah, he claims there was no IO shield in our sample board but I suspect there was, and we lost it. Uh, so there would normally be an IO shield in the box. Looks amazing, like pretty much every gigabyte board that they've released in the last little while. I mean, Diesel, what do you think? Is that amazing? Yeah, he's giving me, he's giving me the thumbs up, it looks amazing. Matte black PCB, dark accents, that heatsink looks outstanding with its like curved shape towards the spire in the center, just looks fantastic. Um, okay, I can stop gushing about the looks of the board and we can get into the juicy features. So there's your FM2 socket. FM2 is a new socket for AMD's Trinity APUs. These are higher performance APUs, particularly on the video side. So these are these are much higher performance than uh, FM1, right? Right, Slick? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yes, much higher performance than FM1. All of our benchmarks are done already and they're just, awesome and they just destroy the Ivy Bridge CPUs from Intel in terms of running with the dead or with with the onboard graphics. Okay, you've got an 8-pin power connector up here. You've got four DDR3 dual channel memory slots here, which is pretty standard. CMOS clear, power switch, reset switch, all here. 24-pin connector in its ideal location along the right-hand edge. USB 3 connector in its ideal location along the right-hand edge, but not in its ideal orientation. I like to see these at a right angle these days. I've seen that on a couple boards and it's like awesome. F uh, six SATA 3, six gigabit per second ports. This is an AMD chipset, so everything's SATA 3, unlike Intel chipsets. There's your uh, post LED readout. There's your two physical BIOS chips, your main BIOS and your backup BIOS. There's another SATA 3 port, your front I.O. connectors, more fan headers. We're going to have to show where all those fan headers are. There's lots on this board. Uh, extra power front USB 2, three non-extra power front USB 2. This one's perfect for charging tablets, trusted platform module, front panel audio, and three PCIe 1X slots two PCIe 16X physical slots, although this one's only wired for 8X. Uh, well, well, okay, three PCIe 16X slots, but this one's only wired for 4X. Really, you only want to run uh, Crossfire on this board with uh, with two two cards. You don't really want to go any higher than that. And one PCI slot in case you've got some legacy stuff you want to bring with you with your new build. In terms of fan headers, we've got one, two, three, four, five, five, four pin PWM, Fan headers, ah, 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 ah. Uh, and on the back, we've got four USB 3.0 ports, one PS2 port, a DVI port, display port, HDMI, and VGA, so pretty much every display out you could possibly care about. And what's cool about this 
is that it's dual link DVI. So you can power up to a 2560 by 1600 monitor at 60 hertz, no big deal. Optical audio out, two USB 2.0 ports, eSATA, gigabit ethernet, and 7.1 audio out. On the back of the board, you find more matte black awesomeness. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the F2A 85X UP4 from Gigabyte. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. A couple more things to call out about Andy's platform is that this board does support triple monitors out using the onboard graphics. Okay, so yeah, you've got high resolution support, you've also got triple monitor out support, and it does support dual graphics. So you can take that built in GPU and your APU, which is next to the CPU whatever, there's a graphics core in there, and you can add a low-end adding graphics card and then you can combine them for like more power, which is like more better.